Welcome back, folks, to WWE Network and Chill. I'm Graham G.S. Matthews, and right here on the show, I break down on the original programming that I watch on the WWE Network. Today, we're talking about Season 1, Episode 5 of Total Divas. And today's episode is entitled Feuding Funkadactyls. So of the five episodes of Total Divas thus far, it seems like four to five of them feature the Funkadactyls feuding. So the title of this show really doesn't give too much away. Isn't really anything out of the ordinary for Total Divas because it seems like as good of friends as Cameron or Orion and Trinity are, Cameron and Naomi, whatever, uh, as good of friends as they are, they are just, just as big of enemies. More often than not, they clash. They have very two different very personal two very different personalities. Cameron is the loudmouth. She's very obnoxious. Trinity seems like she's much more calm, cool, and collected. She knows what she's talking about, and she doesn't, you know, jump to conclusions and all this other shit. And whatever else, but you know exactly what I'm talking about. But um, yeah. So it seems like this episode is also the the crux of this episode is them coming at a coming at a crossroads once again, and we'll get to just why that is in a moment. So we kick off the episode with Eva and JoJo, and like I talked about before we go any further, like I talked in my previous review of Total Divas, that after episode six, I'm going to try to break up the episodes, my review of the shows, a little bit differently, because so far I've written down, like I have this notebook here, and I write down all the notes, and I've seen every episode already, but I'm re-watching to review for the show, and also I'm kind of interested to re-watch them from a different perspective after they've already originally aired, you know, three years later or whatever. But um, I just have the notes right here. Like, if something happens, I write it down. Then the next thing, then the next thing. So they're not in chronological order in terms of storyline consistency, if that makes sense. So I'm going to try to do that beyond episode six. I'm going to try to structure my notes in that way. Uh, but for right now, I'm just going to go, you know, like play by play, literally, and then just give my analysis on each thing that happens. So we kick off the episode, as I mentioned, with Eva and JoJo. They're downstairs in the gym, and they spot Roman Reigns going up to flirt with him for whatever reason, going to introduce themselves. And you can't see it, but I'm doing the air quotes. But they're basically flirting with him. They probably don't know he has a family and kids, but whatever. And Eva's married, or she's not married, but she's engaged, too. So it really makes no sense why she's flirting with all these guys. That's typical Eva Marie, but. Anyway, so Natalia, during this episode, her uh, is her birthday. Her birthday's coming up, and uh, Natalia's in-laws are coming into town, TJ's parents, who she's not really on the best of terms with, so she's not really excited to see them so much because they're kind of rude towards Natalia. Despite the fact that they've been friends forever, Natalia and Tyson Kidd, they are still not the nicest people to Natalia. So she's not looking forward to them coming in, period, but just the fact that they're coming in in her birthday week is pretty bad timing. But with the Bella Twins during this episode, Brie wants to take Nikki to go see their dad. So the story there is that, and I don't know why this is, because the Bella Twins are just that, they're twins. Um, Nikki does not have the best of relationship with her father. Yet Brie, it's not like they're best friends, but it seems like JJ, I can understand. Brie has a pretty good relationship with her father, whereas Nikki does not. I guess he fucked up. He left. He was an alcoholic, whatever. But Bree seems to be on pretty good terms with him. Nikki is not. Maybe she didn't get over it. And she talked about how he wasn't there for her and all this other stuff. But, and again, I don't know where Bree was or how that really factored in. They didn't really discuss that. But obviously, Nikki isn't really, isn't really fond of that idea of going to see their dad, which kind of builds up to the end of the episode, which I'll get to eventually. But uh, TJ cannot tell his parents no cannot tell his parents no that uh he can't move in with them or he can't go see them or whatever natalia wants him to tell them to say no but he just can't say no he's a pretty big mama's boy from what we learned in this episode so the funkodactyls are at a boutique opening cameron drags uh naomi to this boutique opening and they are both dressed up but cameron just really can't get enough of the uh can't get enough of the spotlight and whatever else. And she's trying to teach Naomi to stay in the spotlight. Naomi doesn't really give a shit. She just kind of walks off and it's not really her cup of tea. So then we take, uh, then we see Cena talking uh, to, in Chinese to Nikki Bella, trying to teach her Chinese. What that really, uh, I don't, what that really serves a purpose for, I have no idea, but it's there. But the funny thing about this, why I bring this up, and I only mention stuff that's uh, storyline significant here in this episode. I know everything's, scripted that's like saying the sky's blue i realized that but then john cena brings up the fact that that uh he's teaching nikki chinese and it's really difficult and she makes light of that it's really hard to learn it's a lot different than spanish and i can attest to that spanish is pretty easy but chinese is what how how N nikki bella puts it and she emphasizes that learning chinese is very difficult but nikki bella says and i quote chinese is literally like chinese that is how she puts it in terms of <laughs> In terms of learning Chinese, learning Chinese is literally like Chinese. Well said, Nikki Bella. 
So then after that, TJ takes Natalia out to lunch with TJ's family. And that doesn't go too well. They bring up uh, that they're not on the best of terms, saying that they should go to counseling. Uh, TJ's sister specifically says that. They're out to dinner with uh, or lunch, whatever, with TJ's sister and mother. And obviously Natalia does not take too kindly to that comment. Uh, the Funkadactyls are training in the ring. They're doing dance training, but they're not really in the best of terms because I know Cameron wants to... Uh, Focus more on the on the look in the camera and how you kind of move around, but Naomi's a lot more a lot more focused on the in ring aspect of their uh, of their act. So the Bellas go to their nana, their grandmother with JJ, and again, not this doesn't really serve a purpose because it does because they talk about how in light of Nikki Bella's father not being really there for her during her uh, teenage years, whatever during her early adulthood, that it was her grandfather that kind of fulfilled that role a little bit later on. In her life, so without and her father pat and her grandfather passed away, Poppy or Papa or whatever his name was, um, he had passed away right before they had arrived in the WWE. So she kind of regrets that he was never really able to see her succeed at the level that she's succeeding at this point in time in her life. So they visit Nana and they have a nice little visit there. Uh, Natalia. So this is what happens with Natalia on her birthday itself. So they're going to go out for this really, really nice dinner. Natalia buys this dress specifically for this dinner on her birthday. She's super psyched that TJ's finally putting the family aside. They're in Calgary, which is why they're going to see family because they're in town. And he talks about, oh, we're not really in town that often. We need to see him as much as possible, despite the fact they've already seen him like twice. And they need to stay with him, not really in a hotel, blah, blah, blah. So Natalia, putting all that aside, is excited for her birthday dinner. Only to find out when they get down to the lobby that TJ is not taking her out to dinner. They're going to TJ's mom's house for a special birthday dinner. Natalia says, fuck that. I'm going back upstairs. <laughs> so TJ, I, I thought he was going to go back after, I, but I guess he does not. We don't see TJ go back up to the hotel room with Natalia because what Natalia does next is that she visits her friend, Jared, the trainer, uh, to go get a tan. So he goes visits him. He goes to visit him. And these two go way back. So don't forget, Jared, he plays a very integral part later on in the episode. But uh, they go out to uh, for her to go, not train, but to go get a tan or something on her birthday, I believe. So that's that. Um, after that, Bella's visit their grandfather at his grave, and they talk about how much they how much he meant to them. As I mentioned before, served as their father figure in light of their father not being there. So Natalia blows off the birthday dinner at TJ's sister's house um, because of what happened before, like I said, and then we'll get to him in a second. Um, but after that, after the whole Natalia thing, we see Cameron, Naomi, Eva, and JoJo. They go go-karting, and Cameron gets super, super like cocky and um, whatever else about, you know, oh, I won, I'm the best in the world at what I do. And she's not exactly saying those words. I know those, that's Chris Jericho's shtick. But she gets first place, and she's really kind of shoving it in everyone's face. And that's really what it, what serves as the breaking point for Naomi. She gets really pissed at this. And she calls Cameron out on her shit. And they start fighting and start yelling at each other in the middle of the go-kart place. They start physically pushing each other. Naomi started the push. She pushed her first. They start fighting in the go-kart area. Not like punching each other, but just pushing, or just kind of, not punching each other, but just shoving each other, uh, each other back and forth. So things get heated between the Funkadactyls. And then after that, like I said, Natalia blows off the birthday dinner. She stays in the hotel. She says, fuck that. I'm not doing that. And instead, she goes out to dinner with the previous guy that I mentioned, Jared, who she goes way back with. And uh, Jared admits feelings for Natalia that he's always, you know, he has always been interested in Natalia for a long, long time. And he outright says, I do not want to see you marry TJ, which got a great laugh out of me that he would say that right in front of a camera. And this is not that the last that we see of Jared. We see him a little bit later on in the season. Um, but he does admit his feelings for Natalia, and it kind of closes off with that. And uh, that's that, that's it. I mean, for this episode, anyway, that's the last we see of Natalia, Jared, and TJ. So stay tuned for more on that. Uh, uh, what else, or what Natalia's reaction was, because he just basically says, I've liked you this entire time. Uh, you need someone who's going to be there for you, someone who's going to reserve a whole dinner wing for you, as which is exactly what he did on this show. And Natalia, we do not get a response from Natalia on this show, so stay tuned for more of that in the episodes to come. So the Bellas, after everything that's gone down, finally visit their finally visit their father, and uh, Nikki and their dad. Nikki and her dad make up, and he talks about, or, or she mentions, and she just outright admits that you weren't there for me, you weren't really a real father, blah blah blah. And she cries, and they kind of uh, make up, and her father apologizes and says, "I I regret it every single day. It's the biggest fuck up of my life." Blah, blah, blah. So they make up. 
Uh, Trin and Orion, Naomi and Cameron, eventually take issues to their to Stephanie after not wanting to tag team on an episode of Raw or something, coming off the whole go karting incident. So they tell Jane and Mark, like, uh uh-uh, uh, we're not tag team tonight. I want to go our separate ways. Not officially, but let's try it out. So they take their you know, their shit to Stephanie, and Stephanie said, Maybe we'll all, you know, try a different direction with you two. But bottom line, you guys cannot fight in public. You're divas, you need to act like divas. And uh, if anything happens like that again, you could be reprimanded and or fired. So uh, they eventually just go their separate ways. They have different matches. Or, you know, go separate ways for the time being. Naomi has a match against Alicia Fox. And Oksana has a match against Cameron. Neither match is all that good. Naomi does significantly better. She just didn't, doesn't really have that rhythm. She botches a spot that does not look good. Cameron just looks absolutely awful in her matchup against Oksana. Does not go her way. They make up afterwards. They cry. They make up because... Their matches were both awful, and they realized they're better off together than they are apart at this period in time. So Funkadactyls reunite once again, and then that's about it. I think that's the last thing that we see in this episode. I'm looking at my notes right now, so stay tuned for, like I said, more on the Bell Twins and their father, Jared, and admitting his feelings for Natalia and the impending implosion of the Funkadactyls for what felt like the millionth time. So that was episode 5 of Total Divas. The next episode of WWE Network and Show will be covering, as you guessed, episode 6 of Total Divas. So, in the meantime, guys, be sure to follow me on the Twitter machine at WrestleRant on Facebook at Facebook.com backslash Graham.GSM.Matthews and right here on the YouTube channel by liking, commenting, sharing, and subscribing. So, in the meantime, guys, I'm Graham GSM Matthews. Have an awesome week, and I'll catch you folks down the road.